This unit will introduce exploratory data analysis. So first, let's take a look at what is exploratory data analysis. So before we jump into the field of exploratory data analysis, I just want to make sure that we acknowledge that the person who kind of invented exploratory data analysis is a statistician from Princeton, and his name was John Tukey, and uh, he's the father of exploratory data analysis. And Tukey also invented the box plot and another technique called the fast Fourier transform, which is heavily used in the field of engineering and signal processing. So he's actually, you know, people don't know that he is one of the main inventors of that. And he actually also coined the term bit, which we understand, you know, whenever we talk of 32-bit computing, 64-bit computing, the term bit is so integrated with computing. And it's uh, fantastic that John Tukey is also the father of that term. So in exploratory data analysis, what we're really trying to do is we are given large amounts of data. So here I'm showing you a snapshot of a typical data set. Of course, when you look at a data set just like this, we really have no idea about what the data set is conveying, what information it contains. With exploratory data analysis, what we really want is to take this and make it easy for us to more easily understand what is in the data. Okay, now what I've shown you here are only graphs and exploratory data analysis or EDA heavily relies on graphics and visualization, but that's not the only thing. There are some computational things also that we do when we explore data. But the whole point is, given a complex data set, we want to see the underlying trends and get some basic ways by which we can grasp that data set. That's what we are trying to do with this exploratory data analysis. So let's start off by looking at some of the things that Tukey had said about exploratory data analysis. So obviously one of the main things we are trying to do with EDA is to look beneath the appearances for new insights. Right, so we want to delve a little deeper into the data and get some insights which were not obvious when we just looked at the data from the surface. Another thing that Tukey had said, of course, is anything that makes a simpler description possible makes that description more easily handleable. Right? After all, with data analysis, with, with EDA, what we are trying to do is to take, let's say, a data set that has a million rows and reduce it to simpler representations which do justification, which do justice to the underlying complexity of the data, but also try to point out some underlying trends that we would not have otherwise seen. So in this sense, it makes that description more easily handleable. And another point that Tukey had made is to say we have looked one level deeper is a step forward, but not as far as to say that we have looked one level deeper and found thus and such. That is, we have found something. We have found an insight by looking deeper. Okay, so that is also nice thing that exploratory data analysis would allow us to do. We can go look deeper and then say, look, there is this trend within the data that was not obvious when we just looked at the raw data. And of course, the greatest value of a picture is what when it forces us to notice what we never expected to see. That is really the crux, right? I mean, for example, if you have a data set having uh, information about the fuel efficiency of cars, and we explore the data set and find that heavier cars have lower fuel efficiency. Well, that's something, but that we knew all along that that is the case, right? That heavier cars would have lower. So that is something we would have expected to see, and we were just plotting the data to confirm that that is in fact happening. But what you might see when you do that is you might suddenly see that although there is a general trend of uh, lower fuel efficiency with higher weight, you suddenly see, let's say, a set of cars, for whatever reason, which have, uh, let's say, a high weight, but also have a high fuel efficiency, right? So that is something we would not have expected to see. And in a data set with a million rows, you may have a couple of thousand of such instances, which is a very small percentage, and you may not see it in the whole, in the big picture. But with visualization, it is possible, or with exploration, it is possible that you might spot this small subset and that is something we did not expect to see 
and then you have some insights that you can gain by exploring this phenomenon. Now, Tukey made a distinction between exploratory data analysis and what he called confirmatory data analysis. Confirmatory data analysis is the subject matter of traditional statistics in which we were a population, we take a sample and then we perform some inferences from the sample on the population. For example, you may say, uh, I took the sample and the sample mean is such and such and then you say that I can say that this is the population mean with a certain level of confidence that we say, well, this is a confidence interval that I'm providing for my inference that I'm making. Okay, that is confirmatory data analysis and that is the domain of traditional statistics. It is of course very important when you want to say with a certain amount of certainty that this is happening or you know how confident am I in my predictions then confirmatory data analysis becomes very important right because it's one thing to say the average is such and such and it's another thing to say the average is such, is such and such and here is my confidence interval right so that the person who's receiving that information has more context within which to see the data okay so, uh, at, so at, in the early 70s or early to mid 70s 80s when uh, Tukey did most of his his work at that time uh, exploratory data analysis was not very uh, well established right and it is confirmatory data analysis in statistics that actually ruled the roost and he made the statement at that point in time saying we can no longer get along without confirmatory analysis but we need not start with it okay but in fact in our scenario with our uh, focus on uh, machine learning our focus on prediction right we may not actually be too interested in confirmatory analysis at all okay but the point is uh, what Tukey did when he made this statement is to kind of turn statistics on its head at that point in time because at that time all people knew was confirmatory analysis and they would start with that but what Tukey said is you don't have to start with it do an exploratory analysis which is not mathematically or statistically rigorous but still it's a very useful thing to do okay so that was a very important contribution that Tukey made to this particular field some insights from Tukey and these are actually pretty useful uh, Tukey says that graphs are for qualitative, descriptive, conceivably the semi-quantitative, never for the carefully quantitative, right? In other words, what he's trying to point out here is that whenever we create graphs in EDA, what we're really trying to do is to degenerate some hypotheses of some underlying patterns, right? We can never say in a confirmed way that these patterns are true. Right? So that's the whole idea here, that it is for the qualitative idea, descriptive, exploratory, never for the carefully quantitative. Okay? For that, you have to use you know, traditional statistical techniques to be able to say with confidence, this is what is going on. Okay? And graphs are meant for comparison and graphs are for impact. Okay? Comparison is very important as we will see soon. We are very interested in context because whenever we have any data, we have to look at it in context rather than just in isolation. Right? Many times when things are shown to us in isolation, it becomes uh, extremely misleading. Okay? It's only in context that things take on meaning. And graphs, of course, are for impact. You're trying to convince somebody that something is important and it is through graphs, of course, the cliche that picture is worth a thousand words uh, comes into play here. It's mainly for impact. Now, among the people who are active in the field of data visualization today is a person called Edward Tufte. And Tufte has written a number of influential books and papers in this field. And Tufte has laid out certain important principles of data visualization. The first principle that Tufte says is focus on content not the visualization technique. Okay, this is very, very important. It's very easy to get caught up with visualization techniques, right? So for example, you know how to do a pie chart or you know how to do a bar chart and then you get any data set and you try to do this because that's the technique you know or that's the technique that your tool of choice supports. Okay, now this can be seriously problematic 
we should not be using a tool or technique simply because that's what we have instead we have to take a look at what is my content what am i trying to do in my content and then choose an appropriate visualization technique okay so techniques come second your data and the goals of visualization and communication that comes first so we should not get caught and say well i know how to use r to generate histograms so whatever data i get i'm going to try to do a histogram no you have to look at is that the right thing to do for that particular problem or is that the only thing to do for that particular scenario okay that's that's very important and uh, it is something that we will try to build a skill for in this course and again just like uh, tuki had said tufty says compare don't just describe because things have meaning only in context okay so comparisons become very very important another thing for comparison often you need to show multiple variables okay and we'll see examples of what exactly we mean by this as we go forward right so when we generate a graph a visualization we want to show not the effect of just two variables which is often all we can do because we are limited to a two dimensional surface but we can use techniques to build in bring in additional variables into play so that you can start telling a story with your data and we'll see numerous examples of this as we go forward and again uh, he also says show possible causality right the word possible here is very important because we are trying to say that visualization cannot do confirmatory analysis you cannot say with confidence that this is what caused something but it is useful for us to generate some hypotheses about something happened what was the cause okay so for example the sales in a particular region of the country was high as compared to the sales in other countries uh, other uh, regions of the country well then we may want to ask a question what exactly is it that caused the sales in the particular region of the country to be high okay now exploratory data analysis can never confirm what we are saying it cannot say for certain that this is what caused it okay for that you have to do proper confirmatory analysis but we can show possible causality possible causality when we use exploratory analysis